Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with TheWinnersAndWinners.com. It is the Thursday version of Today in Sports Betting, NBA style. And uh, to take a look at it, to run down this madness that is this Thursday schedule, who better than the, the king of deciphering crazy shit? It is my one and only partner, it is Scott Reichel. Scott, what's up, buddy? Uh, nothing much. Looking forward to some must-win teams, quote unquote. Woo! You know that one of a, one of them is going to uh, is going to let down some fans. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just for the record, this is going to be posted after the Washington Boston game and the Sacramento LA game. So Luckily, gonna... both those games mean absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. So not... in terms of playoff seating, so we're not gonna uh, the, all the important games are going to be in the Western Conference uh, later on. Yeah, Boston sitting. Boston sitting. Everybody. Um, I think. I think even Bob Cousy is uh, is not playing. He's he's out for this one as well. I, I think Boston still might win, which is just a true testament to how bad the Wizards are. Wizards are awful. Yeah, they're playing for nothing. So if we had a lean there, we'd probably what lean Celtics to plus two and a half. Do you think Washington is motivated to avoid the sweep in the? Like, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Is is that a possibility? That the, that the I the rally cry that. is it's better to be one and seven than zero oh and eight. Like I know, is that what we're doing? I know you'll be watching that game closely because you have the no team. You have a team that will go on uh, without you know, a team that will go winless at plus three hundred. Yes, uh, it is important to mention that I actually did hedge that with Wizards plus ten and a half on the overnight, so I did come prepared for that. Okay, uh, oh, so you, got it, you, you got it before they announced everybody was out. Yeah, well, Fanduel has done an interesting job when it comes to uploading lines extremely early. They're uploading lines like 1 a.m. And they just have not factored in like any of the potential resting scenarios. Uh, so that's... I'm like, yes, I'll, I'll take this because the Celtics shouldn't care. And next thing you know, the Wizards are favored by two. So I beat a 12 point line movement. Yeah, so that's, that's, it's it's kind of, it's really fascinating for future reference. If you have must win games and stuff, try FanDuel because they, they upload their lines early. I got Phoenix as my play of the day yesterday at five and a half. It's up to eight and a half. And they, they just, it seems like they're just willing to say, screw it. We just want the action. And uh, I'm not going to complain about it. Huh. Well, there you go. So, uh, and then the, uh, yeah, the Lakers, Kings, yeah, no part of that. Um, okay. So, there you go. So, the first game we're going to take a look at is uh, going to be the uh, Bucks and the Grizzlies. Grizzlies, this has been an interesting line change here as Giannis was suspended for his headbutt. Uh, pulled a one-game suspension. Grizzlies minus three, two twenty-seven and a half is your total. Uh, Scott, tell us what tell us what the Grizzlies have to do. They have to win. They have to win. If they win, are they in? Yes. If they All win, right. they're going. If they win, they're going dancing. They win, they're going to be at least the nine spot. Yes. Okay. Right, and so if they it. lose, then they need. Uh, I two out of three teams to lose. If they lose, they need either the Suns to lose. As you know, yeah. If they lose, they need the Suns or the. I think they need the Suns and the Spurs to lose, in order for in order for them to get in. It's basically a three-way tie. But you and I were breaking down the tiebreaker before, and it's it's too complicated to get in. But basically, the Spurs are pretty much screwed unless the everybody. Spurs need everybody to lose the Spurs right. need all three teams to lose they need the Suns to lose the Grizzlies to lose and the Trailblazers to lose now now wait a minute are you well, sure the Tennessee Trailblazers are half a game ahead so they need the Grizzlies, uh, the Grizzlies and, the and the Suns to lose right so that that also plays in but since Portland's half a game up right now for the eight they win they're in that's easy correct but technically San Antonio San Antonio can leapfrog Portland if Portland loses and San Antonio wins right right and we talked about this. This is kind of a screwy deal because the Blazers have played three more games than the Spurs have. The, the Blazers are going to finish at 74 games. The Spurs are going to finish at 71 games. Yeah, which is so, – it's been pretty chaotic. But for the sake of Memphis, Memphis needs to win this game. But since Portland is already ahead of Memphis, Memphis, if they lose, they need Phoenix and San Antonio to both lose. But it's a lot easier if Memphis just wins the game. Yeah, this makes NFL scenarios kind of kind of look like child's play compared compared to what we got going on here in the West. Because I feel like the NBA just made it up as they went along, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of how that worked out. But yeah, San Antonio is in the worst position right now. Phoenix is in a position where they need to win. They need either Portland or Memphis to lose. And well, you know, uh, in playoff yeah. scenarios, you always look. You always look at who needs help. 
Mm. So uh, who who holds their own fate? So the Grizzlies uh, hold the keys to their own fate. Well, the Grizzlies and the Trailblazers hold their own fate. Right. When in the, when in their end, it's over. The great run from Phoenix means nothing if if the Grizzlies win. Do you think? Right? The, do you, yeah. If the, if the Grizzlies and the Blazers win, because the yeah. Phoenix, because this, it could it could still theoretically be the Grizzlies and the Suns, and the Blazers would be yes. on the outside looking in. Okay. All right, so... And Phoenix anybody. needs to win, and they need either the Grizzlies or the Trailblazers to lose. Right. All right, and then, yeah, San, and then San Antonio needs both teams in front of them to lose. Okay, I think that... I think well, that's, well, technically, two out of three teams in front of them to lose. Uh, because is, Portland's half a game is, up, and then they could jump over Portland if they win and Portland loses today. Is there a scenario where the, where the Grizzlies and Suns win and the Blazers lose and the Spurs? No, that would be they have no, to, because they need three. the Suns or the Grizzlies to also lose. Okay, all right. And I'm I pretty think. sure if the Suns win and the Grizzlies and the Trailblazers hypothetically lose, then the Spurs would leapfrog the Trailblazers and the Grizzlies, and you'd have a Spurs Suns matchup in the 8 9. <laughs> so at least that was my impression of the situation you're right i think that's exactly right okay good times so do you think the grizzlies are going to win or do you think they're going to choke um i think the grizzlies are going to choke do you I, think this counts as a choke without Giannis in the lineup i think i kind of have to call it a choke right to me it comes down to middleton and we talked about that before the show and middleton is not on the report so it looks They'll probably on the minute restriction report, but yeah. At this point, like he's going to be playing. Um, but I know that – this is anecdotally, Scott, but I know that the the Celtic, the, the Bucks have actually performed pretty well against the number to my, to my, to my remembering. This is – again, it's anecdotal. I, I tried to find this and I couldn't find it. But I think the Bucks have performed pretty well without Giannis on the, on the court um, as a, uh, compared to the line. Because I know that there's been a bunch of times where this has happened – where they've decided to sit Giannis at the last minute, the line's gone crazy, and the Bucks have won by 15 or 20 points anyway. So I think – Well, the Grizzlies man, are what? The Grizzlies are one and six in the bubble? They're so, and that's the thing. The Grizzlies have been so bad in the bubble, it's hard to put any kind of faith in them, uh, even in a must-win scenario against a depleted Bucks team. I've got a lean Bucks plus three there. What are you thinking? I kind of agree with you. I think the total's very fascinating in this spot. Uh, I know it's kind of ironic because we're talking about the money line and the spreads for about five minutes, and now we're going into the total. But it's gone from roughly 223.5 or like 224 all the way up to 229. So I'm kind of curious if it'll be, inten- it'll be in- intentional game-extending fouls on steroids in this game if Memphis is behind. They're going to be fouling people with like five minutes left. Just, so sure. just trying to do whatever they can to win the game. Yeah, like pulling, pulling their goalie with five minutes left, basically. Basically, they're just going to be tackling people uh, with like five minutes to go. I think that could be a possibility. But right. in reality, as much as I like John Morant, I, I'm really hoping Memphis loses, if I'm being completely honest with you. I really just don't want them in. I, I, think, I think the Lakers or – not even the Lakers. I think, the, I think Portland is going to kill them. I, yeah. I think I think I just don't want to see it. So I'm I'm rooting for Milwaukee. Um, and I'm guessing they're I guessing they're, th- they're thinking that Milwaukee offense is going to be a little less deliberate. It's going to be it's going to be a little more up tempo without Giannis on the without Giannis on the floor. I guess, or maybe you might just say with spacing, they're just going to go with a bunch of three point shooters and just chuck it. Well, that's true too. Where everything doesn't it doesn't have to run through Giannis. It doesn't. Yeah. Really- if if I had to really lean anywhere, ah. Uh, it's really a tough spot. The reason why we're bringing this up is because we know a ton of people all over the world are going to be trying to do these quote unquote must win team parlays. There's going to right. be throwing it saying, Oh, they need to win. So they're all going to win. I might as well make myself like a four pick. And you're like, no, that's, that's not how this is going to work. God, how are those stats on must win teams? You, you, they always cover, right? Believe it or not. They do not always cover. No, they're, they're, they're actually, they're actually a bad bet. Uh, well for the spreads. Yes. I mean, I'm talking about for the money line. So uh, for the sake of this game, I'd probably lean to Milwaukee. I'm going to lean to the over, though, because uh, I got to assume based on this line movement that that seems like a very, very sharp move. Wouldn't you agree about six points on the total there with the honest not in the lineup? Like, I don't know who would be betting the over. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't – that does seem like a sharp move at this at this time. Um, it's, 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 it, that if it's one hard. or two points, that's fine. We're talking about roughly six points. That's a big. That's a big move, and it's not, that is not a. That is not necessarily a. That's not a square move. I'm going to lean to the over. Because yeah, that, that seems like the play that, with the intentional fouling late with uh, Memphis, 
I got to assume that if Milwaukee's somehow ahead by maybe eight with four minutes to go, you might see some really aggressive college basketball level of fouling over the last minute I, or two. I don't really want to get involved in the total. Um, it's just a matter of line movement for me. You know, I've, I've made a living favor, fading line moves like that. Um, I, don't, I don't want to get involved here. I'm just throwing it out there because I know after Giannis got ejected, I know the Wizards are terrible, but the Bucks still scored, what, 120-plus points? Yeah. It's, yeah, they're – Memphis can't guard anybody. I'll take I'll take the Bucks plus three. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the best team. I do I do lean Bucks, but in reality, I could see the Bucks doing well in the first half and then pulling everybody in the Memphis blows away in the second half. All right, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to let's go to Mavericks Suns. Suns minus nine and a half, Scotty. Well, this was uh, my play of the day. So is your play, uh, you, you got and you got them early, right? You got I got them at five and a half on the overnight on Fanduel. I roughly, it's, you know, there are some perks of staying up roughly two a.m. Eastern time. I know. And uh, I got him at five and a half. My logic was, why would Dallas even think about even, about showing up to the game when it means nothing? They're stuck in the seventh seed. They got nothing to play for. They're locked in. Doncic and Porzingis both played 35-plus minutes against Portland. Yeah, Porzing- Porzingis. And for the record, nobody is officially out. Porzingis has a heel issue. So, even in, right. in addition to the rest, there's there's no way Porzingis is playing in this game. Again, nobody is, nobody is officially out for this game. Uh, I think you can agree with the heel issue. Porzingis is not going to play. I, I don't think he will, although I don't know why you just don't call him out at this point. I just don't know why you just don't just say he's out. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe they want to – I don't know. I don't even know. He's well, not, not, not going to play. <laughs> I'll well, tell you that. that. Well, that worries me because I don't think – you know, is, does Doncic play here at all? I wouldn't play him, but he hasn't been, he hasn't been linked at all to the injury stuff. But the fact that this no. line's gone up three points makes me believe that somebody might know something. And I think that Doncic, if he does play, is going to play what twenty minutes. Well, I don't know why you'd play Doncic in this spot. No, I don't. I don't know why you play anybody in this spot. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of, they should treat this game like the Celtics are treating the Wizards. But as we've discovered, you and I are not NBA coaches. Uh, uh correct. We, even we though on that, so yes. Um, shout I, out I, to I, Brett Brown, by the way. He uh, he lost the game to Toronto, and Nick Nurse didn't even coach. By the way, Scott, as we speak, that Dallas game just came off the board. Fun, yeah. It literally, it literally disappeared as I was looking at it on the on the betting site. Well, hope you know what that means. It means you probably got some injury news. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. all right. So let's let's move on. I've, I I feel good about it. So uh, I got it five and a half. It's it already moved. But Phoenix is still undefeated in the ball. Yeah, that's frustrating. They're gonna they're gonna come back and say Porzingis is out, and it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna go. Be to, Porzingis is out. The Donch is gonna be out. The one's gonna go to like ten or 11. ten or eleven, and I'll be like, all right, thank you. I got five and a half. Ah, should have pulled the trigger. Okay. Uh, Spurs, Jazz. Oh, wait a minute. It's back. I just went to nine and a half. Okay. Yep. So it only went up a point. It's, but it's, it's juiced. It's going to keep climbing. I mean, yes. I'm telling you right now, it's going it's to keep climbing. It's juiced to the Suns. Um, yeah, it's going to keep climbing. Okay. So there, that's probably some interesting. Like Rick Carlisle won a championship. You should know I should not play my starters in a, in a meaningless basketball game in the finale. Seems like, seems like pretty standard rule. Uh, Spurs and Jazz. Spurs. Must win for the Spurs, Scott. Well, technic- it's not, but well, it's not a meaningless game for the Jazz either. Well, I was gonna say technically, it's a it's a must win game for the Spurs. Not necessarily. Uh, the reason why I say that is because of the timing of the game. Uh, you have both well, right. Memphis and Phoenix playing at four, which means that if both of them win, the Spurs are out, and their game suddenly becomes meaningless. Right, right, and that's something. You That's might want to bet on that right before tip. If you see both the Grizzlies and the Suns winning, you might want to lay it with Utah. Do you think the Spurs, I don't think the Spurs are going to show up if both the Grizzlies and the Suns win because that game suddenly turns into a meaningless game for San Antonio. As so, well. do you want? Are you so? Are you, you want to be proactive now and take a little gamble? Take the Spurs. Take the Jazz plus eight. No, I would simply just wait until they're in the fourth quarter of the Suns whatever game and then bet it with like two minutes left in each game. Hmm. You I should think. get a pretty good determination on what, who's going to win those two games, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would think so, unless you don't. You know, I mean, unless it's, you know, they're three. No, if you don't, then you just don't pull the trigger. But I think that even if you could find a way to maybe find uh, – I don't know if the Spurs going to be playing on the same court. Probably not. So they're probably just going to be starting on time anyway. But I think you can agree that's kind of what they do in soccer with, the, with these leagues. They have all the games at the same time, so you can't – 
see the results and then determine what you're going to do after. Well, they, and they, they've, they've made that move in, in all the major sports, at least in North America. They've, well, except they've, today, because San Antonio is going to either well, be playing for something or nothing. The NBA doesn't do it, but the NFL does it and Major yeah. League Baseball does it. Major I think the does. NBA should, but I think you can agree with me that if you have the opportunity of seeing while well, the Suns and Grizzlies are up 10 with about three minutes to go, Spurs are minus eight, suddenly Jazz plus eight looks very attractive, don't you think? Yeah, because the because the Jazz we talked about that they're on the six line now, they have a shot to move up to the five. They have a shot to move up to the four five. So the question is if Popovich going to take this game seriously, even if they lose. And the answer is with a bunch of young guys, they might. But I got to assume they're going to drop a little bit of mental focus if they know no that question. they're not going to play first. No, no question. If 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 the Spurs are eliminated, uh, Spurs minus eight is a ridiculous bet. Correct. Okay. I, I think that there's value on Jazz potential money line there if you really want to go nuts for the sake of the Spurs already being eliminated because now one team's playing for something, the other team isn't. So if you wanted to lock up the Jazz plus eight now. Um, we could, but I'm saying that. If you're, betting, if, you bet on, you're betting on one of those other two teams to win. You're bet, Yeah, one of the other two teams to lose, technically. Same thing, okay. but yes. All right. So for that reason, for the Spurs game, I would simply pass and just wait to see the results of the other two games. All right, so now and, we – And I think you'll agree with me on that strategy. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. The, the Spurs' motivation is entirely dependent on what happens um, with the Suns and with the Grizzlies. No, no question. So, uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, Pelicans and Magic, this is a game means absolutely nothing. Um, although, I, I think – I've got an angle on this. I think the Magic uh, want to want to want to take care of business here and uh, hit the ground running with some momentum. because they, they well, That's what I thought, and they lost to the Nets. Fair enough. Fair enough. But so I, I don't know. The only question that I have is, is Zion going to play in the finale? I don't know. I know him and Ingram didn't play against Sacramento. And there is a question, which I think it's important to pose. Since the Pelicans and the Kings are both out, are they going to be tanking in the finale against by each other? The, oh, by the way, I do have news on that. Williamson is out. Ingram is out. Drew Holiday is out. Uh, yeah, I'd lean to Orlando, but um, the question that I have for you is, is there going to be a little bit of a tanking situation going on between Sacramento and the Pelicans to try to move up in the draft lottery? It looks like it. It's yeah. possible. I'm just saying. It looks like uh, New Orleans is being proactive. And, uh, I mean, your odds will go from 1% to 2% in order to get, or like 0.1 to 0.7 to get yeah. the first pick, but every little bit helps, you know? Sure. Or, uh. As we call that in the math world, you've increased your odds seven times. I still think this is going to be uh, – this should be Coach Gentry's last game with the franchise, but he, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it's going to – going to blame it on Zion being injured, but I, I would get rid of him. But that's just my opinion on the situation. So maybe they'll play well for the coach. But in reality, I saw this bench unit or whatever play against the Kings the other day. Not good. Not good at all. Uh, no. I'll, lean to the, I'll lean to the magic. Now there's a game. Now there's a game. I might. Be, I might be interested in getting involved in the total. Under. Uh, I, I no. I would. I might play. I would play the over there. Uh, the in, the, in the New Orleans Orlando game. Yeah, that 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 defense for New Orleans is so bad. Man. Yeah, but the game against the Kings only had like 117 points. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, it had 117 points, and Zion actually scored like 17 points. Zion hasn't scored more than five points in like three weeks, and he no, had 17. I, I'd be tempted to play the over or the Orlando or the Magic over 115. Okay. Orlando 115 maybe, but I know Gordon's going to be out. Uh, Fournier is going to be out. There's just so many people missing in this game. I'd probably just lean under. But yeah, I know. Gordon's out. Fournier's out. Ross is out. I got to uh, assume Vucevic probably shouldn't play either. Uh, not only, I think Vucevic is their best player, so I don't think he should play. I think they want to build momentum. I think they I want think it's to make- possible, but I know Vucevic has had injury issues over his entire career. I, I don't really know why he'd want it. Um, Last game on the board, and this is a game. This is a game that's going to matter no matter what everybody else does. Correct. And this is going to be the Trailblazers, who are in a win win in your end scenario. The win, they they lock up the eight spot no matter what the other three teams do. Mm. So the Blazers have been uh, installed as a nine and a half point favorite over everybody's favorite spoiler, the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, any value on the Nets at all, Scott? Uh, I want to say no, but the Nets keep beating teams they shouldn't beat. You look at the prices. They beat the Clippers as like a seven-point underdog. They beat the Bucks as a 19-point underdog. They just win random games. Now, the right. thing you have to wonder here about Portland is 
is Damon Lillard going to come out to breathe at all? And the answer is no. He should probably be playing three full quarters and just throw him out there like it's a war. I mean, that's how I would view it. They're going to they're gonna mention him the fourth. On, they're going to keep him on the court during timeouts. They should. <laughs> he gets no rest at all. Now, the only thing you have to wonder is that Portland's defense is so bad that there is a chance this game turns into an absolute track meet, mm-hmm. and maybe this game's close. But in reality, it, it's a lot of points. But if you're the Nets, are you even playing anybody? I, I wouldn't play Lavert. I wouldn't play Jared Allen. I wouldn't play Joe Harris. I don't know why you really would. You can argue about momentum to hit the ground running. The Nets have been the most one of the most impressive teams in the bubble in the first place. Yeah, I think I don't think I don't think either one of these teams wants to have wants to go out on a stinker. I think the Nets are more willing to go out on a stinker than Portland is because Portland really can't afford to at all. I think the Nets are going to look at this and say, people thought we were going to be terrible. Or some, we, what, what are the Nets? They're four and three in the bubble? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I, I mean, I know. I, know, I know people are going to point to Monty Williams as they should to win the bubble coach of the year, which they added these new award things for the bubble, which I think is – Is that a, is that really a thing? They, they, they announced that they were adding that yesterday. Nice. So the point is, it's going to be Monte Williams. You should you should 100% nominate uh, Jock Vaughn because I thought this Nets team might go winless, and this team ended up winning, ended up going 500 minimum. Yeah, Lavert's been upgraded to probable. I I, I don't know why you'd play him, especially since he's had injuries throughout his entire career. Uh, as a Nets fan, I kind of want to see them play spoiler to Portland. I just think that would be funny, but I, I'd have to lean. I, you know what? Screw it. Give me the give me the lower to over. Whatever that was, whatever that was, point total is. Just give me the lower over. Let me see. Let me see if I got one. What do you think that's going to be? Like thirty-five. Um, if it is, I'm involved. Uh, let's see here. Take the lower three pointers over the lower points over the lower whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh. Because uh, I really don't have an interest on the side there. Because I understand, like, oh, you know, this game's whatever. The Nets can easily just have a backdoor cover. It's 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 really tough there at nine and a half. Yeah, I mean, in, you know, they're going to be looking for spots to get Lillard some rest if that game gets out of hand. Yeah, Lillard's player prop is thirty six and a half. I got to play over there. It's just uh, it's it's so high. Uh, oh, whoa, Lillard made threes over four and a half at plus one sixteen all day every day. That that's my play on that game. Give me a little word, five or more threes at plus one sixteen on Vandal. Yeah, that's good. That's a good play right there. Uh, what about from a, from 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 a just a a game perspective? Are you going to play the Nets plus nine and a half? Uh, I think if I was going to play the Nets plus the points, I would just take the Nets team total over. I think the only way the Nets cover is if this game turns into a one twenty a one thirty something one twenty something game. So the Nets over is third is one thirteen and a half. I would take the over there. I think that's a better play than the ten and a half because I think if the Nets are going to cover, I think this game will be a high scoring game. I don't see this game being a hundred to to ninety two. I think you can agree with me that this both these teams, at least Portland, should get to one twenty. And I think this game turns into an, a bombs away three point contest. Yeah, I, I would I would I would consider the over two two thirty six and a half or two. So, yeah, instead of, instead of that, if you like the Nets, I would just take the team total over because Portland hasn't so, stopped anybody. Take away on that game, points, 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 and more points. Yes. Okay. All right, good. Get gun to your head. What do you play? You still you still dodge the question. Uh, for, no, but for the, for the spread? Yeah. Or the total, or I could choose. The spread. I know, you, I know you like the total as your best play, but if you gun to your head, who do you think? Well, my best play is the lowered over four and a half threes of the team nope. total for the Nets. No, nope. nope. well, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Take it. I'm going to lean to Portland. <laughs> I, I've been wrong about the Nets pretty much every single game in the bubble. We have not done well on the Nets, bro. I, I don't think anybody's done well on the Nets, unless <laughs> you're just an absolute contrarian because then you've just made a cleaning. But I, I got to lean to Portland because even if they're up 12 with like five minutes to go, are they really going to take Lillard out? I don't know. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. All right, Portland rolls minus nine and a half. You heard it here first. I get, I still like the team total for the Nets, but okay. yeah, I, yeah, and I, and I would lean over the total there too. But I, yeah, team total. I mean, it's the same bet basically. It's the same bet, but in case Portland underachieves a little bit and you get yourself a, you know, like a one twenty one fifteen game, 
then you yeah. still I think you have a better chance of catching the of, of cashing the over 113 and a half than you do of cashing of cashing the plus 10 and a half. Both of these teams D and up seems extremely unlikely. Well, we both said that the total in the Mavericks game against the Portland was funny because it was like 240 or just yeah. like over. And then both teams broke 130 or like yep. 125. And we're like, all right, no, that doesn't surprise anybody. All right. Well, there you go. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's, I don't know if this is what the NBA wanted or not, but they sure got it. They got, they got their chaos. I think got- if the NBA could re, could redo something, they would move San Antonio to four o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. That's- I think everything else is fine. I'm just talking. I'm just talking about the chaos of the last day. Yes, I and mean, the chaos is great. I just I, I have an issue with the Spurs playing right after the Suns and and uh, Grizzlies game ends. Agreed. Agreed. All right, bud. Well, we've got a short schedule on the MLB, so we'll be back to take a look at that. Thanks for joining Scott and I, taking a look at the chaotic last. Uh, well, it's not actually the last day. Tomorrow's the last day of the NBA, but there's really it's the no last game. meaningful day. No, no games tomorrow that really mean anything. It's the playoff eliminator day. <clears throat> yes, it is. There, uh, it could be a slight. There's gonna be Oklahoma City and Houston play tomorrow. There's a little bit of positioning there. I didn't ask you, by the way. Who do you think gets in? From the uh, as the eight, as the, as the eight nine. You get two of the four teams. Who are you taking? Uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Portland. I think they've been playing fantastic basketball. Okay. And are we going Phoenix? I think you. I think you have to. You could take the Grizzlies if you really think the Bucks are gonna not show up. Can't. I can't take. I can't take the Grizzlies against. I'm the rooting Bucks. for Phoenix. I'm in too deep on Phoenix. They played. They played good basketball. They, Phoenix being the only undefeated team in the bubble would just be they, phenomenal. And I'm. Mean, I'm all good. in. That's a good. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Plus, I, plus I think Phoenix uh, Trailblazers for best of two. Yeah, I, I think that would be a lot better than uh, Portland, Memphis. I think Portland's going to sweep Memphis if they have a play in. Yeah, space. I want to see the. I want to see the for, from a basketball standpoint. I want to see the two teams that are playing the best. I agree. I think if Memphis plays Portland, I think Portland's winning the the first playing game, and it's a wrap. I think Phoenix could win the first playing game and force game two. Sure. Yeah, so I agree. That's what I'm rooting for. I agree. I think I want to see. I want to see Phoenix in the Trailblazers, in there. and I think they probably. I think they they have. A, they have. I like the scenario. Uh, I, I like. I think it breaks that way. No, the truth is, I don't know if the suspension mattered for Giannis. I don't think Giannis would have played in the finale anyway. No. But do you think he should have been suspended longer? I thought one game seemed a little bit low. I know you have the playoffs and you can't afford to spend him more. He literally headbutted a guy. How do you give him one game? It's Giannis. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's all a superstar treat him thing. I thought it was going to be two games, maybe. Suspend him game one of the playoffs. Le- Le- LeBron would have gotten a serious finger wag. So LeBron would have gotten a fine of maybe 4 or $5. But, you know, Giannis hasn't earned that right yet. No, no, but he did. he's getting close. Uh, the well, who knows if that if that uh, if that was performed by Markeef Morris, he's getting six games. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. By, by the way, from somebody that hates KU, that'd be a very Markeef Morris thing to do. That's why I said it. But I'm assuming you agree. Is that if it was a role player, he's probably getting five, six games. Yes, I agree. So, I I totally oh, well. agree. So, yeah, apparently the NBA uh, places favoritism on a superstar, believe it. The rich get richer, baby. That's the way it works. Cool. Welcome to America. All right, there you go. That's it, NBA. Um, We'll be back tomorrow to talk uh, the Friday matchups, and then we'll be back on the next show here in a minute, talk a little MLB for myself, for Scott Reichel. All of us over here at Winners and Winers, you know the drill. You you want to get down even deeper on all these games, check out winnersandwinners.com. Check out the articles there that are written by our handicappers. Check out Scott and I doing videos on these games. And, uh, yeah, should be should be a fun day. Strap in, everybody. It's going to, be a, uh, going to be a hell of a ride. So, you guys take care. Good luck on all your plays, whatever you decide to do today. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow to talk about it. And you guys take care and have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.